Hey guys, what is going on? Chris here with Shughead Gaming, bringing you my review for Zing The Land Beyond, developed by White Lotus Interactive. And while this is currently available on various PC, VR platforms, and flat, this review will of course be on the PSVR version and reviewed on a PS4 Pro. Zing The Land Beyond releases February 12, 2019 for an estimated price of $20. Of course, that depends on your region. Zing The Land Beyond is a fantastical, non-combative spiritual journey throughout the afterlife. Along the way, you are challenged to solve a myriad of puzzles which require logic, creativity, and the mastery of environmental control. Winner of many awards since its earlier release on PC, does this PSVR port retain all the things that made it great on PC? Let's find out. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, hit that bell icon. And remember, if you want to see more PSVR news and info, check Shuckhead Gaming out on Twitter and Facebook. Let's kick this review off with a look at graphics. Simply put, Zing is a beautiful looking game on PSVR, and especially when playing on the Pro. The almost magical world of Zing is a serene and almost dreamlike experience regardless of what stage you're playing through. Levels here burst with color and personality while they wash over you. Zing is very sharp inside the headset, and with only a slight blurring and a touch of aliasing when looking off in the distance, looking out across these levels can at times be breathtaking. Lighting effects here are the real crowd pleaser though, with day and night control being a major game mechanic and an amazing visual treat for VR users. Particle effects are put to good use with flying debris, light beams, and weather effects all on full display. Fans of the Mist series can finally get their Mist-like puzzle fix with Zing, as it succeeds visually where the horrible port of abduction failed so miserably. Zing isn't without its shortcomings though, as some texture rendering can be seen even in the pro version as you walk throughout the world. Some odd shadowing effects crop up from time to time, and of course the usual texture work concessions you would expect to see in a visually impressive game such as this when optimizing to make it work on the PSVR. These negatives aside though, Zing is at most times a visual treat for PSVR headsets, and when compared to the flat version, really is the only way to experience this game world. Sound is up next. Like its visuals, Zing The Land Beyond brings that same sense of polish and care to the audio side of things, with a very distinct focus on making this world feel like it exists on a different plane of reality. Every sound, whether it be the in-game effects, the excellent voice work, or the enchanting music score, works together to create a game world that is as relaxing and meditation-like as it is interesting and just a touch weird. Sound effects sound like they were ripped right out of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but are well done all the same. Voice work, while sparse in its use, does a nice job of building a connection to the spirit whose life you are walking through, and as a result, helps to build an emotional connection between you and them. That is if you're in touch with that type of thing. Me, I felt nothing, as I'm a cold, dead soul. Anyway, I digress. The musical score is very upfront in the audio mix, and a major focal point of the game. The music here wasn't really my thing, but it is very well done and does a remarkable job of bringing in different instruments to suit the unique cultural vibes in each level, while still sounding like a cohesive work throughout. Of course, all this is wrapped up in a nice 3D audio package that also helps to highlight some nice ambient effects like crackling of lit fires or the whistling of wind. All in all, a very polished and well-made audio mix. And that brings us to gameplay. In the land of Zing, you are crossing the threshold between life and death. You're on a journey to earn your freedom while freeing other spirits trapped in what is basically purgatory. Each of the four realms you visit were once home to a spirit, which will act as a guide in telling the story of his or her life throughout the scattered poetry that you will find across various tablets. Spirits will also help you in your quest to solve puzzles in the hopes that you will set them free. Kind of magical, kind of zen-like, and with just a touch of spiritual weirdness, Zing the Land Beyond isn't really like any puzzle game I've ever played before. Each of the four main realms vary in setting and all revolve around manipulation of day and night and various elements. You progress through them in a mostly linear fashion while collecting all the pieces to open the final end gate. In addition, you will come across optional puzzles and secrets often resulting in a reward of a rune if you choose to complete said puzzle. These runes are collected and used later to unlock an additional eight mini-worlds. These eight mini-worlds unfold as additional stories of lost souls but without the puzzle elements. And finally, the game culminates in one final end-of-journey level. 
Time to complete varies from 7 to 12 hours depending on your level of puzzle proficiency and how much of a completionist you are. Controls are very simple in Zing. As you walk around each level, you have the ability to jump as well as pick up and throw items. There is no clock counting down, no combat, and no health bar. Puzzles are all logic-based and mostly involve changing day and night cycles and controlling one of the major elements. Puzzle difficulty is fairly easy in early levels, but does pick up as you progress. Those looking for some really tough mind busters will likely be disappointed, but most will find the learning curve here enjoyable and challenging. Littered throughout the world are tablets and whispers from ghosts also helping to nudge you in the right direction, so I never found myself just stuck. The game does a nice job of bringing in new puzzle elements to keep things fresh, however some ideas and game mechanics did get a bit old over my long play session, so I recommend maybe not binging on this game so as to avoid puzzle fatigue. Movement throughout the game can be done with either a DS4 or 2 move controllers, with the DS4 being my preference. For movement, this game features full locomotion and smooth turning, so people with motion sickness should be cautious. That being said, there are field of view and click turning comfort options for those that need them. Zing the Land Beyond is played seated and with a minimal amount of space being required. Finally, that brings us to Fun Factor and my final review. Zing the Land Beyond is a competent and often beautiful puzzle game. Its spiritual and existential themes may not be for everyone, but regardless, Zing the Land Beyond is a polished and thoughtful game that plays well in the optional flat mode, but really proves its merit in VR. As you know, I hate rating scales and instead rate games on a basis of buy, wait for a sale, or burn it to the ground. For puzzle fans, or for those looking for a VR game to just relax inside, this is a very solid buy. Every aspect of this game is polished, and the lengthy campaign ensures you will get your money's worth. For those more like myself that aren't normally drawn to puzzle games, this is still a very solid VR title worth exploring, but maybe on a sale. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys on my next video.